Hey, one more thing before you go. Today, we're diving into the nostalgic journey through the 1980s with a special focus on the new documentary film by Andrew McCarthy, The Brat Pack. Are you excited, Diane? Yes, I'm, I'm very really excited. excited. This, this is my this is my time. This is it. This my is it. This, this was my time. For those of <laughs> you who might not be familiar, The Brat Pack was a group of young, talented actors who dominated Hollywood in the 1980s. This iconic assemble, ensemble, <clears throat> this iconic ensemble included names like Emilio Estevez, Rob Lowe, Demi Moore, Judd Nelson, Molly Ringwald, and of course Andrew McCarthy himself. They starred in some of the most memorable coming-of-age films of the decade, capturing the essence of teenage angst and the trials of young adulthood. Welcome to One More Thing Before You Go Over the Teacup Sunday. I'm your host, Michael Hirsch, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Diane. Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. We'll see you in a few. Hey, Diane. Hello, Michael. You know, this is right up your wheelhouse, isn't it? Yes. Oh, my gosh. This was such a part of my life when I was 16. Oh, all of it. All of it. You know, it, it's, it is, obviously, I've watched a good portion of these, not all of these. But, right. um, you know, I kind of, um, I think, uh, well, we'll get into it well, the more we get into it. But, you know, there's some Rat Pack adjacent people that I was more familiar yeah. with than, than this group here. But, you know, hey, yeah. we're going to have some fun anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's tell everybody about what it is. Andrew McCarthy did a documentary film. Um, and basically, he, he how old is he now? How old do we figure out? He's like 62? 61 or 62. Something yeah. like that. Which just seems insane. <laughs> yeah. He, he, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it's weird, weird looking about these movies. And then, well, we're all aging. We all don't see ourselves as yeah. we used to be anyway. But yeah. in this documentary, The Brat Pack, he reunites with some of his former co-stars to reflect on their shared experiences and the impact they had on pop culture. The film features candid interviews and behind-the-scenes footage offering a fresh uh, perspective on the highs and the lows of their careers and in, in their friendship. As we delve deeper into the Brat Pack documentary, we'll explore how these films not only defined a generation, but also left an indelible mark on the landscape of American cinema. Andrew McCarthy's documentary takes us behind the curtain, revealing the camaraderie and the conflicts that shaped these young stars' lives both on and off the screen. So whether you're a longtime admirer of the Brat Pack, as you are, Yes. And I, I am yes. too for every one of these actors, actually. Yeah. Or discovering magic for the first time. And there is magic in these movies. This episode mm -hmm. promises to be a captivating look at a pivotal moment in film history. So sit back, mm -hmm. relax, and let's take a trip down memory lane. What do you think, Diane? Yes, let's go. Memory? memory? <laughs> I mean, I mean, really? It, when we start naming uh, seriously. Off some of these, yeah, I mean, when yeah. we start naming some of these movies, it, it, we still, I mean, not... I think, I'm, 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 this, I'm this is so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh when this God. movie, this documentary first came out, you know, we kind of were excited about it. We marked it, made sure yeah. that we got um, ahead of it to make sure that we got to be able to watch it. It's on Hulu. So okay. if you uh, subscribe to Hulu, we we do. But if you subscribe to Hulu in any form, you have the opportunity to kind of watch this. If you've been a Brat Pack fan, then obviously a lot of this is going to make sense. It will be interesting to see the age progression of everybody. It's like we all age. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at the same time, you kind of get to see a little bit of um, resentment, a little bit of uh, angst, a little bit of um, anger, a little bit of depression, a little bit of, you know, all this surrounding even the well, name of the Brat Pack. They all, <clears throat> they all had their own take on what it meant to them it came from an article in new york magazine yeah. is where it came from and the 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 um uh, the journalist that wrote the article is the one that came up with the name the brat pack and um you know they it really kind of 
it wasn't a, for most of them, most of them, they had a thing about it. It, it felt derogatory to them and it felt like they were um, stalled in their careers because of it. Which well, I, was really I, I can understand I was, that up to a point. I mean, I really, I can't, but some, you know, there are individuals within this, Brad Peck, and I'll name them all off here in a second, but there are some people in here that actually made a career for themselves after the Brad Pack because the Brad Pack mm -hmm. consisted of, I think, around 10 movies. And there are some movies that are Brad Pack adjacent that uh, I'm for more, you know, that I'm more familiar with and that many of you might be more familiar with, especially the individuals that are, because the ones I'm going to list off here are, are the, the quintessential Brad Pack. And then there are a few that are adjacent that you'll recognize as well. Um, so, Let's talk about that. Uh, Emilio Estevez, Rob Lowe, Demi Moore, Judd Nelson, Molly Ringwald, Ali Sheedy, Andrew McCarthy, and Anthony Michael Hall. Um, those are pretty much the list of the 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 Brat Pack, what they call the Brat Pack. Mm -hmm. uh, and every one of those people, I think, went on to bigger and better things. I I believe. Yeah, I think so. Well. Um, well, yeah, there's one person that they really didn't even mention in the, they didn't even mention in the documentary, which I thought was weird. Um, and I don't know what she did after it, but um, oh, just her name just just left my head. She was in St. Elmo's Fire with the rest of them. Yeah, and I, I actually, in all my research, I didn't find anything. It, to be, be honest with you, I didn't find I anything. I know she was in it. They even showed her in the clips of some of the movie. Yeah, and I, I can't think that. of her name. It's driving me crazy now. Maybe they don't. I just had it. Maybe they don't. Uh, maybe they don't think that she was enough of a character to become part of this, or maybe she only did the one yeah. movie. I don't know. I can't. Okay. I. Re this is driving me crazy. I well, just had her name. Yeah, maybe she did only one movie, but um, we'll go over the movies that these guys did. But there was there are some. There are icons in the industry. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Mayor Winningham. Yes, that's what I she was. She that. was in it. Yeah, she well, was in I, it, but they didn't mention her. Well, I, they may not consider her a brat pack. Maybe that's the only movie she did. Just because they were all in yeah. St. Elmo's Fire doesn't necessarily mean they were all well, brat pack. But the, uh, but in that list of brat pack, not all of them were in St. Elmo's, St. Elmo's Fire either. They were in The Breakfast Club. Well, Some true. were in... So Emilio was in both, I believe. Judd Nelson was in both. Um, well, I'll list all the movies here, and I think we probably it. can, can yeah. go there. But realistic, look, it's it, for whatever reason, she wasn't included yeah, in this list. She wasn't even weird. included in the Brad Pack adjacent. In the Brad Pack adjacent is Tom Cruise, Sean Penn, mm -hmm. Matt Dillon, Nicolas Cage, Leah Thompson, and Matthew Broderick. You know, they're all kind of adjacent. They had movies in and around the same time. And they themselves went on to, well, obviously, Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes. Yeah, and went on to right. bigger and better things. There were a few kind of ones where they got stalled a little bit. But even in the Brad Pack adjacent, she wasn't mentioned. So I know that you mm -hmm. want her mentioned. You should talk to somebody no, about I, that. Go I, call I'm just up, wondering. I'm just him. wondering... You know, I got to see San Almost Fire again. It's been many, many years since I've seen the movie. Maybe she had just a really, really small part. I don't know. But, you know, um, it, it's this is a good reason for us to reach out to Andrew McCarthy and say, hey, dude, my <laughs> wife wants to know. Yeah. That's a good just reason, curious. right? Just He's going to go, well, who the hell are you and why are you calling me? I said, because my right. wife wants to know. Yeah, like that's going to happen. Um, so... And I'm trying to think if I had his picture on my wall. I had many of them on my wall, like, you know, taking the pictures out of the teen magazine, you know, that we had back in the day and they were all over my walls. And so it was really, it was really cool for me to watch. I love this. This was, this took me right back. Um, but there was one person, one person not in that list of, of Brat Pack adjacent that I think should be in there. And that's Michael J. Fox. I think so too, but you know, in all of the research that I've done, uh, he wasn't, but he should have been because the Back to the Future movies were, I mean, they're legendary. Right. And in, in within those, maybe that was kind of the, more the tail end because that was what, no. That, that was, I think th those came out the same year. I yeah, think 85. Yeah, I guess they did. Yeah. So, or the first yeah. one anyway. 
Well, maybe because he was all by himself. It was only him. Leah Thompson was in it. Well, him and Leah Thompson. So, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe it's weird, was... isn't it? Weird that he's not on that list. Anyway, <clears throat> <laughs> well, let's just... tell everybody about the list. The official Brabac movie list um, were basically Saint Elmo's Fire, Pretty in Pink, Class, About Last Night, The Breakfast Club, Fresh Horses, Weird Science, Sixteen Candles, The Outsiders, Oxford Blues, Less Than Zero, Young Gun, and Betsy's Wedding. Um, and of those, those, have you seen all of those? The, I was just going to say those last four. I don't know that I've seen all of them. The last four. I I think but, I told you I have not seen Sound Almost Fire. I which is I, I, what? No, like, what? are you kidding me? Yeah, we need to watch Saint Elmo's Fire. You probably would have divorced me if I told you that years ago. We're gonna watch it. You haven't watched Saint Elmo's Fire. Your Honor, the reason I'm divorcing this individual because he didn't watch Saint Elmo's Fire. Saint Elmo's Fire. Fire. (laughs) Um, I've seen parts of Pretty in Pink. I haven't seen the whole thing. Oh my God! Okay, we're gonna watch that too. Class. Now, that one I don't remember as much, so we need to watch that too, I guess. But. About last night, I have seen that one. Love that movie. The Breakfast Club, I've obviously <laughs> seen that one. Oh, my so, favorite. So my your, uh, favorite. Our youngest daughter's favorite, too. Oh, love it. She loves it as well. And Fresh Horses. Oh. And which, I, don't, that, I don't remember seeing that one. I don't remember but. seeing that one either, so we're going to have to go mm-hmm. check that out. Weird Science. I love that one. Me as well. A good one. 16 yeah. Candles, which I, I've not seen the whole thing of 16 Candles either. Oh I've, my God. I've always seen little bits and pieces of it, and I think isn't that the one where she takes the lipstick and does her lipstick with her boobs, or is that the? Uh, no, no, that's Breakfast Club. That's the Breakfast Club. Okay, then yeah. never mind. Of course, that's the part you remember. Hey, Sixteen Candles <laughs> was that the one where Anthony Michael Hall was <laughs> in the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah, had his had yes. somebody's underwear or something. Yes, it hurts. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. the part I've seen. I think, that, I think that's 16 Candles. That's what I've seen in 16 I, I, Candles. I, I get a lot of 16 Candles and Pretty and Pink mixed up, which I don't think I'm the only one because they came out very close together <clears> and <throat> it starred the same people pretty much. So it's either it's one of those, yeah. How about The Outsiders? Oh, I love The Outsiders. I haven't seen that I, in years. I've not seen that one either. I've not seen Oxford Okay, Blues. how did I? How have we been together 35 years and I never knew this? I don't know. I haven't seen The Outsiders. Oh I haven't seen Oxford Blues. I've not, I've not seen Less Than okay. Zero. I have not seen Oxford Blues or Less Than Zero. So. Okay, Young Guns. I guess. I've seen, I've seen Young Guns. I don't remember that one. And I do believe I've watched Betsy's Wedding. I, I think I remember pieces of it. So, anyway, we're going yeah. to we're gonna have to have like Brat Pack movie weekends. Well, and, and you know the really cool part about that is Hulu has them all yeah. listed and readily available for you to viewing pleasure, for your viewing pleasure, mm-hmm. right yep. after the documentary film. You can, yep. you know, kind of scroll down a little bit and it's got the whole list of Brat Pack movies. You And, go and just, just in case you didn't say the name, because I didn't catch if you said it, the name of the documentary is Brats. Brats. Yeah, I probably Bratz. didn't say it. Brats. Yeah. It's called Brats. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I really did say good. it. I just said Brat Pack, Brat Pack, Brat Pack. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's Brats, and it's really good. And it is I good. Yeah. highly recommend you watch it, especially if you are my age and you were 16 in 1985. Well, and, and it, not just 1985, a lot of it still applies today, I think. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying it's for those of us of that <clears> age, <throat> when those movies came out, it's just, I mean, you have to see it. It's, Do you think it had a cultural impact? These movies had cultural impact, especially oh, from your perspective because sure. you were right in the middle yes. of it? Yes, for sure. Um, you know, um, i trying to remember back. Um, definitely, well, I think it, I don't know. For me, I think it really started with um, a movie that came out in 82, which I was actually probably, I was kind of on the cusp of maybe, maybe I shouldn't have seen this movie. Um, but one of your favorites, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I oh, think yeah. that... I think that opened the door to the teenage film, you know? Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, but I think that it started with that one, and then just, you know, it just, for a few years, we just had every movie was for us. It was all for us, and it was so awesome. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Judge Reinhold was in that, and um, 
Uh, I, I should have I should have put that on this list because that I, well, I but it was, personally but think that it was, was in nineteen. That. that but it was I think it was like I said I think it opened the door, but it was a couple of years or a few years before. Yeah, but they so. included Sean Penn in the adjacent one, so it would yeah. Guess. I mean, look, well, you then could, that would then then you'd have to include Jennifer Jason Lee and um, uh, Phoebe Cates. You know, and as those, Jason. those guys went on for a whole bunch of other stuff in the eighties too. That yeah. were really, really iconic movies. Yeah. So, I, well, yeah, I, I think I would. I mean, I would. I, my personal library, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Well, then, sure. I can do that. I how about agree. the How about the unforgettable soundtracks that still resonate oh. today? Yeah. Oh, I've, I've got the song in front of my head. Breakfast Club. Judd yeah. Nelson. Yeah, oh, forget it. And yeah, every Jed time knows. I hear it, everybody would be. I'm sorry. They play it all the time, they all do. the time. I hear it almost every day. And uh, everybody will it's be amazing. disappointed if you're Jed Nelson fan. He did. He politely mm-hmm. declined, along with um, Anthony Michael Hall. They both politely. It, it says literally, "quote politely." Politely declined, declined. to be. And Molly in, Ringwald. In Molly Ringwald politely declined also. Yes. She said Which she didn't want to backtrack. Disappointing. Yeah, I like it. Like we were saying, um, the whole Brat Pack um, we'll call persona, it right? But but the persona of being in the Brat Pack really affected a lot of them negatively. But I think what's really interesting about the documentary is, especially when he talks to Demi Moore. Oh my gosh, this woman is so wise and just puts it all in perspective so well, even, even you could see him making breakthroughs for something that has affected him for 40 years. I made a breakthrough. You did too, just by what (laughs) she was saying. It's amazing. If you don't watch it for anything else, watch it for that conversation. It's about halfway through. It's at minute 53. Watch it, learn it. It's amazing. And you know, what's really cool about that is the fact that You'll understand um, Demi's background a little more. You'll yeah. understand some history behind everything, and mm-hmm. the, the mere fact that she came up with what she did in the conversations that she had were so Amazing. enlightening and so uh, full of wisdom and retrospect yes. that it um, you kind of go, "Wow, she's really come a long way." She and she's done a lot of work on herself yeah. for sure to come up with what she comes up with. It's it's. It's pretty um, cool, actually. She's. I would just love to sit and talk with her for hours. You think the fashions inspired um, like trends? Oh yeah, we dressed like that in high school for sure. Like every nice... every time the movie came out, we were dressing like something in the movie for sure. Yeah. I have to ask you that yeah. because you know when um, those came out, you were still in high school. I wasn't. Right, but and the big hair, <laughs> please. I mean, if the eighties weren't weren't anything else it was big hair in fact and i've seen some I pictures of you the big hair yeah yeah oh yeah. yeah i had it in fact you kept it even for a little bit you had some big hair yeah. when we first met yeah yeah not yep. quite as big well, as the 80s but well we met in the 80s honey we met so. in the 80s we, we did so. meet in the 80s <laughs> yeah <laughs> so <Duh>. <laughs> yeah um in fact we met you know three years after these movies came out so yeah, I still had the big hair for sure. Yes, and and, and the, the the fashion. I, mm-hmm. I remember certain things like the long denim skirt with the big uh, uh, belt big with belt. the with the uh, yep. uh, what do you call them? Conch shells, not conch shells. The silver. So my silver belt that I still have that I can't wear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, One day you, I will be back in that belt. You'll be I back in that you. belt. Um, <laughs> Let's talk a bit about the movies. The Brat Pack movies are filled with iconic scenes that have left lasting impressions on an audience. Here's a few memorable moments. Uh, the Breakfast Club, 1985. We were talking about what year that came out earlier, but 1985. It's one of the most unforgettable scenes is when the five students, each from different social cliques, sit in a circle and share their personal stories and struggles. This moment of vulnerability yeah. and connection is a powerful highlight to that film itself. I mean, it resonates all the way around. It, it Like I say... Totally. Uh, Breakfast Club is one of Nicole, our youngest daughter. So it it, it has gone generations because our youngest mm-hmm. daughter that's one of her favorite movies. Yeah, is the Breakfast it's, Club. It's, uh, and I love that. that scene. Is uh, that scene is one of it's definitely probably my favorite scene. I, I'm sure a lot of people would agree that 
it, I remember watching it in the moment and going, oh my gosh, they're like, yeah. they're actually people, other people, guys included, because back in the day, we were, yeah. I mean, at least for me, I was like, guys never feel this stuff. Guys, guys are just guys and you know, they're, you know, they can be jerks and whatever. They actually go through shit too. Oh, sorry. Well, it, and, they, and, go, and, they, they go through stuff too. Shit's and, okay. And in, um, and in the moment, I, I remember vividly going, whoa, everybody feels this stuff. I had no idea. Yeah. And, you know, and realistically, when you, that's one of my favorite scenes as well because it does show the vulnerability of everyone. And the fact that, you know, it resonates back to even when I was in high school because same things. You had cliques, you had um, the jocks, you had the drama geeks, you had the the cheerleaders, squads, that, I mean, they were, they were all cliques. And not everybody was, you know, you had the cool people, you had the nerd people, you had, mm -hmm. there were all those separations. And well, nobody yeah, really, we had that. What's that? Yeah, we had, we had that too, but I was just talking about more of the, the background, like with the family stuff. Well, I like, guess I'm saying, it, and we yeah. all had secrets. And I, right. what I liked about that scene in itself, like you said, it, the vulnerability of everybody divulging secrets within themselves that, you know, we in high school would at least didn't have the opportunity to kind of get that honest, you know, right. with what was going on in our own personal lives and and how the personal lives affected us and how it made us who we were during the time. Right. And I think I think that's I think that's a good thing about today's generation what what's the generation of today that's that age? Um, I don't know, I oh, lost really? track. Oh gosh. Okay, it's not. It's not X. It's, not, it's, it's the uh, one not millennial. It's, it's not, not. It's not millennial. It's after that. Anyway, the generation of today that is that age, I think that they do a much better job than we did, of being open with each other and letting each other have that space yeah. when it's needed. I think that's fantastic that this generation does that. Now there are some other things that you know, we're like, okay, really, you guys, but. Yeah. But I think that's a really, really positive thing about this generation that's in those teenage years. And they I, seem and to be there for they seem to be there for one another. Yeah, that involvement I think is a really positive thing too. Mm -hmm. um, St. Elmo's Fire, nineteen eighty five. Also, the scene where the group of friends gathers at the St. Elmo's Bar, their favorite hangout spot, captures the essence of their post college struggles and the complexities of their friendships. Emilio Estevez's mm -hmm. character Kirby also has a memorable moment when he chases after his love interest Dale in a snowstorm. Um, so, you know, again, I think um, it goes back to what you said, even with the previous movie. It allows the vulnerability and the honesty to show in the fact that we're all individuals, we're all people, we're all human mm -hmm. beings, and that, um, you know, we're all we're all kind of hiding stuff or crushing it down. and We're all messed up in some way. We're all messed up in some <laughs> way. <laughs> well, um, and that's what it surprises me so much that you, you're pretty sure you've never seen San Almost Fire because you are, you are closer to their age. I probably like have seen were, it. I probably forgot about it. In fact, maybe I just kind of quashed it because of my childhood. I, I guess, but I mean, cause they were like 20, 21, 22, 23, the actors when they made that movie and you would have been maybe a couple of years older, maybe not that yeah, much. Yeah, I, I mean, I've probably seen it. So, I probably just forgot it. It's been such a I long time ago. I don't know how you ago. could forget it. 1985 is a long time ago. I cannot believe you forget it. In anyway. A while, in, a, in a distant galaxy, <laughs> long, long ago. It's such a good movie. Uh, pretty, <laughs> <laughs> pretty in Pink, 1986. The prom scene oh, where yeah. Andy, played by Molly Ringwald, walks in wearing her self-made pink dress is iconic. It's a triumphant moment that mm -hmm. symbolizes her individuality and resilience. I do remember that. Um, yes. You know, in the segments that I have seen from Pretty in Pink, and I think mm -hmm. that that, uh, you know, allowed, same thing. It just shows independence. It shows who we are. It shows, mm -hmm. you know, Molly Ringwald have, she was to me a little hard to get used to, but, you know, I, I have come around, especially some of the uh, movies that she's been in since, these mm -hmm. Brat Pack movies. Um, but yeah, 
16 Candles, 1984, so we're backtracking a little bit. The final scene where Samantha, played by Molly Ringwald, sits on a table with Jake Ryan. They share a kiss over her birthday cake. is the most Mm -hmm. classic romantic moment that has become synonymous with 80s teen films. Well, since I didn't see that, has it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, all the John Hughes movies, I mean, all of them, that... That's they are iconic teenage films that he what he was able to tap into our psyche. It was crazy. And just do it. But, well, well, look at him yeah. in this documentary. See, I can't believe the hairstyle. Holy crap! That well, he had a wearing, mullet. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Well, that also <laughs> see that's also what I think this should be part of. It's just, this is one of the um, Brat Pack adjacent movies. And uh, I think Patrick Broderick should have been in, in there as well. Ferris Bueller's Day oh. Off. Yeah. It was 1986, yeah. although not always considered a Brat Pack film. I would think it is because it features some of I, the same actors. The parade yeah. scene where Ferris plays by Matthew Broderick sings Twist and Shouts, one of the most joyous and memorable moments in the film. And I have to say that out loud because obviously, you know, one of my favorite movies of all time is yes. that movie. Ferris, yes. <laughs> it literally is. Yeah. It, so, it's if it when it's on and they run it a lot, when it's on, you're like, stop everything. Gotta watch it for the one thousand three hundred and eighty third <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, I'm there, dude. I'm there, man. It, it's not like I don't love the movie. I do, but oh my well, god, we've seen that movie a lot. That and Fast Times at Richmond High. I mean yes, that even too. Fast Times at Richmond High. I love love yeah. that too. I mean, obviously there's a couple of moments in there that make me love it. A little more, but oh, here we go. I'm well, sure a, you can. Un- I'm in a I'm long sure line knows. of other people that are. <laughs> yeah, but you know, so it's it's oh, just like Friends. Friends are one of my favorite television programs. We've talked about it here before, yeah. but you know, I watched it for specific characters. We all do that. We all have our specific yeah. characters. We like, we love, and we mm-hmm. we're attracted to. You know, not necessarily physically. When I say attracted to, but you know, we resonate with we. You know, we mm-hmm. kind of like uh, are drawn towards. Um, yes, Jennifer Aniston, I'm still drawn towards, and you know that. So I know that. <laughs> it's okay. But look, I gave you a, okay. a Matthew Perry, um, like, still shot, headshot that, uh, you know, put in a frame yeah, for you. Yeah, don't, don't mention his name. But, I'm still but, very sad. <laughs> memories, memories. Anyway. Good memories. Yeah. Good memory. Friends good memories. But, yeah, yeah so, I mean, the Brad Pack... The Backpack documentary, I think, is a must-watch. If if you grew up watching these movies, I think that you really should um, watch them. I think you should watch the documentary. Yeah. Even though that there are, you get an introspect behind it, in, like you said earlier, you get different perspectives of individuals and how they saw their triumphs and tragedies differently than the other individuals. Yeah. How they saw... Yeah. You know, how it affected them, what it did for them, where it propelled them. And you can see that in their careers. You know, you see that in their careers. Even in the adjacent, the backpack adjacent. Look at Tom Cruise, man, and what he's done. But Rob Lowe, same thing. Rob Lowe was a bad boy. Rob Lowe got into a lot of trouble as as part of the Mm -hmm. backpack. And he has come out of it ahead in so many ways, you know, even nowadays. And some people have fallen behind. Yeah. He, uh, he had a completely different perspective, I think, than all of them, um, which at the time, I think his perspective is what I, what I kind of imagined them to be feeling. Um, I was really surprised to learn that it wasn't a positive experience for most of them. Yeah. Um, and, and the fact that they took that Brat Pack name even at the time, I knew what the guy was sort of going for, and it wasn't calling them brats. It was just a take on the Rat Pack, which yeah. I knew of just because you know my parents and everything. I you know I I knew of Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. and all that. So at the time, I remember thinking, oh, so they're just it's a new Rat Pack uh, as a group mm. of people who are at the top of everything. They are the it crowd. They're the it group of actors. So that's a great name. I mean, that's what I took from it at the time. Oh, I agree with you. I think that um, I, I saw that that connection as well, and I, I think a couple of a couple of people that Andrew talked to had mm-hmm. brought that connection up in within that thinking, 
you know, hey, you know, it was kind of like the Rat Pack. I think Rob Lowe is well, the one. Rob Lowe, yeah. You know, Rob Lowe definitely pack. took it took it for that, and yeah. he he loved it. He loved everything about that time, but he seemed to be the only one, at least of the ones they talked to. So, well, it was and, interesting. And, and I, I think he took it as a, um, he took it like a, uh, a badge of honor. Yeah, for I sure. Think, would be yeah, a good way of putting it. I would have thought they would have too. But, you know, when you're early 20s, you know, and, and where they were at and what they were experiencing, I mean, I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't experience that in my early 20s. So, you know, I can't really totally imagine what I would have done. You know, um, my early twenties. I kind of, I, I was a little wild in my early twenties. Um, I was not because we got married when I was twenty, and then we had babies. So <laughs> I, you know, I well, wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, well, no I'm, don't say sorry. I'm sorry, I'm not, not sorry. Say, I'm just, I'm just saying that my early twenties was completely different. I did, I, yeah. I, I don't know what I. And what's funny is that I was actually going for that kind of career at the time when we met. Yeah, I do. So, yeah. I mean, that was the road I was trying to take, you know, so it's interesting. I'm, I'm trying to find the author of that article in, I, in my notes, and for some reason I can't find it. Oh, what was his name? Cool yeah, because he, it's, I don't want to, well, I'm not going to give a spoiler. So, overall, what is your recommendation for anybody wanting to, uh, should they watch it? I think you should. I mean, especially if you were of the age and experienced all those movies at that time, I think you'd really be interested in it. Um, you know, if you didn't really like the Brat Pack movies, then probably not, you know, or maybe you would because you get to hear how yeah. of an, uh, how negative of an experience it was for a lot of them. But I, I think it was great. I, I enjoyed it a lot. And for those of you that are listening, if you haven't watched the Brat Pack movies, go to Hulu. Watch the documentary, mm -hmm. and then go check out all these films. They're amazing films. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know that I'm a film aficionado. I mean, what did we figure out one time? We have close to 3,000 We have too many. It's insane. I mean, we have so many that we're like, do we have that movie? I think we have that movie. <laughs> I feel like we might have that movie. Yeah. But we don't know for sure because we have too many. So Yeah, so it's kind of one of those things. Just do it. Hey, one more thing before you go, Diane. Do we have a national day? Yes, we do. It's kind of interesting. So, especially call, talking about Pretty in Pink, today is National Pink Day. That's why I'm wearing pink. And, and it, pink. you've got a few hours left. You can go throw some pink on. Yeah. So, um, each year on June 23rd, National Pink Day colors National Pink Day colors the world in vibrant shades of pink and explores everything it represents. Dating back to the 14th century, to pink, quote unquote, the verb means to decorate with perforated or punched pattern. It would have been curious to find pink used in fabric or decor during the Middle Ages, which when you think about it, and you look at stuff from the Middle Ages, there's not a lot of color, really. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, occasionally it was seen in women's fashion and religious art. However, in the 13th and 14th centuries, artists sometimes portrayed the Christ child dressed in pink, the color associated with the body of Christ. Oh, we learn. That was interesting. Very interesting. Um, there's, there's also National Detroit Style Pizza Day. I did not know until I read this that there's a Detroit style pizza, but now I really want some. I didn't it's know either. basically deep dish square cut, which I'm all over. I've, we've eaten that before, but I didn't know it was Detroit, Detroit style. I don't remember eating that, but anyway, huh. yeah. So. Um, National Hydration Day. Yes, we're it's it's hot all over the country. Every day is Please National Hydration Day. I would yes. think. Please drink your water, especially now, but yeah. drink it every day. Every day. Yep. And Very there you cool. go. Well, I think that kind of wraps it up. I, I say mm -hmm. check this movie out. It's on Hulu. And it was done very, very well. It was done from a personal perspective. And uh, you get the inside skinny on a whole slew of stuff. And yeah. although it's missing a few of the characters that uh, he wanted to talk to, they politely declined. Um, it's still an amazing mm -hmm. story that it comes to. And they, done, done there's a lot well. of a lot of personal a lot of personal stuff going on. So done very well. So yeah. it's great. Well, listen, yeah. 
thank you very much for joining us today on this program and listening to us and and putting up with our little antics and you know our little uh our stuff our craziness well our crazy. kind, kind of crazy it's, cr- it's crazy we're a just, little just we're a little, little cray Thank you very much for being a part of the community. One more thing before you go. We appreciate each and every one of you. We thank you and are grateful that you come back to us each and every week. We would hope that you continue to do so. Please make sure that you subscribe, you follow, and you write a review, please, because reviews always help us get more notoriety. It helps us to build our reputation. It helps us to move forward and to bring you bigger and better content. And as a reminder, again, as you've seen, there are some changes coming to one more thing before you go. They're not major changes, but they're changes. So you're going to see a little shorter episodes coming in just because the doctor told me, and I'm listening to the doctor. So the episode's going to be a little bit shorter, but we're still going to bring you the same amazing inspiration, motivation, and uh, education throughout each one of our conversations, as well as some entertainment. So one more thing before you all go. Have a great day. Have a great week, and thanks for being here. Hi. Thanks for listening to this episode of One More Thing Before You Go. Check out our website at beforeyougopodcast.com. You can find us as well as subscribe to the program and rate us on your favorite podcast listening platform.